Hey, Survivors, Zed Files here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about the new Arc Genesis creature, the Magmasaur, also known as a Lava Lizard. First, I'll be covering the Magmasaur's taming process, second, its attacks, third, its health and weight, fourth, its mobility, fifth, its harvesting capabilities, sixth, its abilities, and seventh, bonus things that it can do. The Magmasaurs spawn all over the volcano biome, but to tame one, you need to steal the eggs from the insides of the volcano while maneuvering around Magmasaurs, Onyx, Scorpions, Spiders, Athropleuras, and even Lava Golems. There are multiple entrances into the volcano, and the entrance I'm going to go through in this video is at the coordinates 32.7 latitude and 85.4 longitude. The things I recommend you bring for this journey are a ghillie or hazmat suit to handle the heat, a good pump shotgun with hundreds of ammo to take care of the magma source, a high level ferox and make sure it's on passive. If you don't have a ferox and or don't know much about them, click on the link in the top right corner to go to my ferox guide video, and also a lot of element for your ferox to keep its transformation going. Now that you have these things and are at the volcano's entrance, you'll need to wait for the volcano to erupt and then right after that you can go inside. This is so that you can make sure you aren't caught in the eruption when you're inside the volcano. If you are caught in it, you will instantly die. Even when you're outside the volcano, you need to be careful that none of the debris hits you. So, when you go through the entrance, you'll be in the inner systems of the volcano. Most of the creatures will ignore you and your ferox, except the magmasaurs and lava golems. You can kill magmasaurs if they aggro on you, but you should just run away from the lava golems since they're really slow and really hard to kill. The magma saw eggs are inside the lowered areas of the volcano and are pretty much always guarded by their magma saw parents. Once you find an egg or a group of eggs, get down near it and start killing off all the nearby magma saws with your shotgun. They aren't too hard to kill since they don't have that much health and they can also easily be picked off one by one. You can also use your ferox if you're close enough to one, but try not to fall into the lava. During this clearing out process, make sure to feed your ferox some element so that it doesn't revert back to its little form mid-fight. Once you've cleared them all out, get off your ferox, look for the highest level egg, steal it, and then run for the nearest exit. You can find an exit by looking for and following the big purple crystals. Once you have the eggs in your inventory, all of the magma saws will be trying to shoot you with their fireballs. Don't try to fight back anymore, since if you stay still to fight one, you'll become an easy fireball target for all the other magma saws. Instead, just run past all of them, but still expect to take some damage. Once you're outside the volcano with your precious eggs, you can just casually travel back to your base. For raising your baby magma saws, the egg will need around 10 air conditioners in order to be warm enough to start incubating then you'll need to wait for around an hour for it to finish incubating. In the meantime, you can go fetch the Magmasaur's baby food. Baby Magmasaur's won't eat regular meat, they instead have to eat Ambergris. Ambergris is harvested from glowing rocks that can be found all over the lunar biome. You can use a metal pickaxe, which will give you around one Ambergris per rock, or the mining drill, which will give you around two Ambergris per rock, and also mine much faster. Once you have around 30 ambergris, you can return to your baby magmasaur. The ambergris will spoil, so put it in a creature's inventory to make it spore slower, then once you get back to your base, put it into a fridge. After a couple of hours of feeding and imprinting, your baby magmasaur will grow into a big adult magmasaur. When it's an adult, it won't need to eat ambergris, it's fine with just eating meat and also stone. To ride the magmasaur, you'll need to learn and craft its saddle, which is learnt at level 95 and it costs 125 cementing paste, 150 fibre, 230 hide, and 400 metal ingots. And it's made in the smithy. The first attack is its bite and swipe. It does 125 damage and can attack 0.7 times per second, which means its DPS damage per second is 87.5. The magma Saw's second attack is its searing spit which just charges up its Searing Spit meter in 2.5 seconds. After it's charged, you can either use your first attack button or let go. 
Using your first attack button will let you save up your steering spit, but it will then decrease pretty quickly. Letting go of it will shoot a fireball, which is the magma sword's third attack. The damage values on this attack vary a ton, depending on factors like how much steering spit you charged up, the victim size, and the victim's health. The fireball, on impact, does a big chunk of damage, and then does small amounts of damage 20 times. It will also inflict the inflamed debuff, which does percentage based damage over time. This will also be inflicted to the creature's rider. The fireball then breaks into 2 to 10 smaller fireballs, depending on how much searing spit you charged up. First small fireball, the victim will receive some percentage based damage, and also the inflamed debuff. So yeah, there's a ton of damage values going on with this attack. To give you an idea of how much damage this attack really does, a single fully seared spit fireball does 1000 total damage to a Bronto with 40,000 health, and does 5000 total damage to a Thyla with 10,000 health. With these crazy values, I wouldn't be surprised if this attack gets nerfed soon. Fully powered fireballs can be shot every 7 seconds, so its DPS is around 140 to 715. The range on this attack is very good, but the fireballs fly through the air pretty slowly, so it is very easy for the enemy to dodge it. Leveling up your Magma Sword's melee damage will only affect the impact damage of the fireball. The Magma Sword's fourth attack is its Fire Shake. This attack is used by having the Searing Spit melee charged up, doesn't matter how much, and then using the third attack button. The shoots explosive tire in all angles. It does an okay amount of damage on impact, not as much as the fireball attack, and it then applies the same 20 small amounts of damage and a flame debuff as the fireball attack. So this attack's damage varies a lot. When the tar falls on the ground, it will stay there for a few seconds, and if anything walks over it, including allies, they will get the inflamed debuff. This attack can actually damage the magma sword itself as well. If the magma sword is too close to a big target and uses this attack, it will receive around 300 torpor and lose around 100 health. And this attack at full power can be used every 5 seconds, but then can also be spammed at low powers at around once per second. The Magma Saw's fifth and final attack is its taunt. It just gives itself the taunt effect for 10 seconds. This causes any creature nearby to start attacking it, even Parasaurs, Quetzals, Pterodons, and so on. Aggroed creatures will stay aggroed for 30 seconds, not just 10. Pairing this attack with the Fire Shake can be very useful for clearing out areas of passive creatures. And this attack is activated with the jump button. Now for the Magmasaur stats. At level 1 base team stats, the Magmasaur has 4500 health and 550 weight. And at level 297 max team stats, with 42 wild points and 20 team points pumped into health, and 34 wild points and 20 team points pumped into weight, the Magmasaur has a little over 23,000 health and over 1,600 weight. At low levels, the Magma Sword has a crazy amount of health, but it doesn't improve that well when leveling up, so at high levels, it's a little bit less than Arex's health. Its weight, both at low and high levels, is a little bit better than Arex's weight. The Magma Sword is pretty fast, almost the same speed as a low level Thyla, but its turning radius is terrible, which will make it annoying to move around. It's not too mobile, but it's much more mobile than Anki's and Odicarus's. Next, what the Magmasaur can harvest. The Magmasaur is amazing at harvesting stone, metal, obsidian, crystal, just anything that you can get from rocks. It's like an Anki and Odicarus combined. Metal in its inventory weighs a quarter of the weight, but stone and other resources stay the same. It is also pretty good at harvesting wood, and it can also harvest dead corpses. Magmasaur is an amazing harvester. The Magmasaur's first ability is that it can smell items inside its inventory. It's a bit faster than a regular furnace, smells the same things, and doesn't require any fuel. While it's melting, it will move much slower. The Magmasaur's second ability is that it can be set to turret mode, Unfortunately, it won't just use its fireballs, it will use its taunt and fire shake attacks as well. It will even use its bite and swipe attack if its enemies get close enough. Magmasaur's third ability 
is whenever it uses an attack involving fire, both you and the Magmasaur will gain freezing immunity. This will make you immune to cold temperatures, and I'm pretty sure freeze attacks as well, like the Snowball's Dive Bomb and the Manigami's Ice Breath. The Magmasaur's fourth ability is Lava Immunity. You, the Rider, is also immune to taking lava damage because of the Lava Proof Saddle. You're actually immune to taking any damage while you're inside the saddle, which is very useful for PvP. The fifth ability is that you can't charge up your Searing Spirit when in water, since water cancels fire. This includes rain and snow. And also, in cool temperatures, like in the tundra biome, or even just a cold night in the grasslands, the magma sword will take 10 seconds instead of 2.5 to charge up its Searing Spirit meter, which decreases its fireball and fire shake attack speeds by a ton. So this ability is more of a disability. And sixth, whenever you are charging up your Searing Spit, nearby creatures will get an effect warning them about your Searing Spit. They will also receive a tiny amount of damage. The Magmasaur with its fire attacks can easily tear down stone and metal structures, and even damage tech. Magmasaurs can be made boosted and bred, However, they need to be in lava to breed, which is pretty hot. <laughs> and unfortunately, magma saws don't allow rider weaponry. So, now that I've shown you everything you need to know about the magma saw, I'll give a quick summary. The magma saw is an extremely powerful combat creature. It is able to shoot fireballs out of its mouth that deal tons of damage to a wide area. It also has some other interesting attacks and tons of health. It is a must for PvP. The Magmasaur is also an amazing harvester. It's legendary at harvesting stone, metal, and anything else that you can get from rocks. And once it has metal, it can even smelt it without the need of any fuel. Well, we have now reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, found it helpful, don't forget to give it a like, and also make sure to be subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss any future Arc Genesis videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.